Hello and welcome to Archie Corner. This is episode number 17. Today's topic is Where is Panic Hardware or Fire Exit Hardware Required by Code? Well, to begin, let's first discuss the difference between Panic Hardware and Fire Exit Hardware. These terms are normally used interchangeably and people wonder if they're the same thing. If we look at the building code, the IBC, Panic Hardware is defined as a door latching assembly incorporating a device that releases the latch upon the application of a force in the direction of travel. This picture here shows a common Panic Hardware installation on a door. You press on the bar, which will unlatch, and push the door open. So what is the difference between this panic hardware, which we just defined, and fire exit hardware? The code definition for fire exit hardware is panic hardware that is listed for use on fire door assemblies. So are they the same? Well, from a mechanical aspect, they both provide the same or similar operations to open the door. But from a fire rating standpoint, one can be used on a fire rated door assembly and the other cannot. Most people often use these terms interchangeably like I mentioned earlier, so this is just FYI in case you ever wondered if there was a difference or not. For the purposes of this video, we will use the term panic hardware going forth. But keep in mind that fire exit hardware is allowed in fire rated conditions while panic hardware is not. So the question again is, where is panic hardware or fire exit hardware required by code? IBC section 1010.1.10 states that you need panic hardware in swinging doors serving a group H occupancy and swinging doors serving rooms or spaces with an occupant load of 50 or more in a group A or E occupancy. So for group H occupancies, they go on all swinging doors. But in groups A and E, they are required only in rooms and spaces with an occupant load of 50 or more. If you don't know much about occupancy groups, I have made a video which will show up on your screen now. You can click on it and view it for more general details. But besides occupancy group, this section states that there's one more area that requires panic hardware, and that is electrical rooms with equipment rated at 1200 amperes or more and over six feet wide, and that contain overcurrent devices switching devices or controlled devices with exit or exit access doors. Now, unless you're an electrical engineer, you may not know if the equipment that is in the electrical room meets this criteria. Therefore, ask your electrical engineer about this. Now, let's see an example. This is a typical floor in a multi-story building that requires the use of stairs to egress the floor in the building itself. This is an office building Therefore, it's not an A occupancy building or an E occupancy building, but we have a conference room that has more than 50 occupants in this suite. This means that this room will be required to have two exits, and since this room is over 50 occupants, it is considered an A occupancy for egress purposes. Therefore, even though the suite is in general an office use, this room is an assembly use, and therefore, it would be required to provide panic hardware on both doors. One thing to have in mind is that once you reach a certain level of protection, you cannot go into another room or area that has a lower level of protection. How does this affect panic hardware? Well, once you're in a room that requires panic hardware, all the doors on your egress path of travel all the way to your exit discharge must have panic hardware. In this case, we see the two egress paths each going to a different stairway. Therefore, every door on the egress path of travel needs to have panic hardware, including the door leading to the stairway. Now, we're not showing any of the other floors here that you need to travel through to get to your exit discharge level exit. But have in mind that all doors, including the doors on different floors along the entire egress path of travel, they all require panic hardware. And there you have it. In general, these are the locations where the building code, the IBC, 
requires panic hardware. As always, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If so, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If there are subjects that you would like covered, feel free to leave me suggestions in the comments box below. In the meantime, I'll leave you here with a couple more videos I think you would like. But for now, this is Archie Corner signing out.